And America's Secretary of State has reportedly said in a private meeting that U.S. intelligence has pictures proving Russia's involvement in Ukraine. Well, if John Kerry means these photos, which allegedly show the same people in Ukraine now and in Georgia in 2008, well, we've seen them all before. The State Department said they were gathered from the Internet, but were soon shown to prove nothing. Gaine Chichikan has more. Secretary Kerry keeps bringing up photographs, which he says confirm the presence of Russian operatives on the ground. The State Department saw the men, the same bearded men, now in Ukraine and in Georgia back in 2008, and without any doubt came to the conclusion that it's Moscow's hand. They pointed at the bearded man in a group photo and claimed it was taken in Russia among Russian soldiers. Then the photographer of that very shot came out and said he, in fact, had taken the photo in eastern Ukraine, not Russia. Washington said, oops, small error, but the other one's a real deal. Anyway, John Kerry accuses RT of making false claims when fact-checking is not exactly his department's strong suit. Undersecretary for Public Diplomacy and Public Affairs Richard Stengel sort of uh, followed up on Secretary Kerry's attack on RT last week, where he called us a propaganda bullhorn. Mr. Stengel is accusing RT of making false claims, and he gives examples. He writes, Consider the way RT manipulated a leaked telephone call involving former Ukrainian Prime Minister Yulia Tymoshenko. Through selective editing, the network made it appear that Tymoshenko advocated violence against Russia, or the constant reference to any Ukrainian opposed to a Russian takeover of the country as a terrorist, or the unquestioning repetition of the ludicrous assertion last week that the United States has invested $5 billion in regime change in Ukraine. These are not facts, and they are not opinions. They are false claims. Well, first of all, on Yulia Tymoshenko's leaked conversation, Mr. Stengel accuses RT of making it appear, quote-unquote, appear that Mr. Tymoshenko advocated violence against Russia. You don't have to edit or manipulate anything when the person actually says that. Take a listen. In the case of $5 billion invested in Ukraine, Mr. Stengel makes it sound as if RT pulled that amount out of thin air. Here is the Assistant Secretary of State for European and Eurasian Affairs, Victoria Nuland. We've invested over $5 billion to assist Ukraine in these and other goals that will ensure a secure and prosperous and democratic Ukraine. And the assertion that RT refers to any Ukrainian opposed to Russia's actions as a terrorist is, is simply not true. Here is just one example of the choice of words that our reporters make on the ground when covering the events there. This is a very angry group of anti-Kiev demonstrators. We're marching down one of the main streets in the southeastern Ukrainian town of Donetsk. It seems as if the scene is being set for confrontation. And that confrontation came when they met about 2,000 pro-unity protesters, among them members of radical movements. And in our coverage, we'll continue to challenge everything the U.S. says about Ukraine, because if you only listen to what the U.S. State Department says, you would have a most distorted understanding of what's going on there. In Washington, I'm Kenneth Chekhan, RT. And U.S. congressmen want Washington's policies to get a higher billing in international news broadcasts. They're proposing a bill which aims to strengthen America's role in what they call the free flow of information. And this isn't the first effort to boost such an agenda. Uh, this video about the referendum in Crimea was made by the State Department to explain why the U.S. imposed sanctions on Russia. It says that Crimeans only had two choices, either to break away from Ukraine or join Russia. In fact, that's wrong. The actual ballot also included an option of staying within Ukraine.